Hey everyone, Patrick CK here with my unboxing and review of the Wavelink USB 3.0 dual bay hard drive docking station. Let's start with the packaging. Not sure why, but I expected this box to be bigger. Anyway, on the side here you see a diagram of how to set it up. What you're meant to do with this guy is dock in what would normally be internal storage devices like hard drives or SSDs so that you can create backups, clone other drives, or simply use it as everyday storage. I picked up this one because recently I took apart a few old abandoned computers that had perfectly good hard drives like a 500 gig Hitachi and a 500 gig Seagate. Now, I didn't want to install them directly in my new rig because I wasn't sure what was on them or if I was going to be using them long term. Another reason I picked this up was because it was a steal at $22 on Newegg and I was curious to see how well something at this price could actually serve my needs. On the other side are a list of specs and features which include support for USB 3.0 5 gigabit per second transfer speeds which really equals roughly 600 megabytes per second. It also supports at a 1, 2, or 3 but not 3 express with a max capacity of 6 terabytes per slot for a total of 12 terabytes. Let's go ahead and see what's actually inside. Remove the sleeve that reveals a plain box. I actually do like this kind of packaging. Uh, before we look at the dock itself, let's see what else they give us. First thing we find is a USB 3.0 cable, which is about 24 inches in length, which may pose a challenge in some setups. Next up is the massive 12 volt 3 amp wall wart. The good thing is that it does feature overcurrent and short circuit protection. Even if you don't have proper surge protection at a splitter, this will protect the drives you have docked. It's still pretty ungamely and the cord itself is 36 inches long which again may or may not pose a challenge for your setup. We also find a couple info cards, a product registration card, a cash rebate card with nothing inside, a warranty slash feedback card. This does come with an 18 month warranty. A mini CD-ROM with utility to clone and perform backups. And lastly, a basic, roughly translated English instruction leaflet. Looking at the dock itself, it actually has some weight to it, which is nice. Uh, let's remove the plastic cover here. On the back are the USB 3.0 port, power in, and a power switch. Around the front, we find a power indicator and the simple interface for the offline cloning feature that displays progress of any cloning tasks. On top are the two bays. You can see the cutout of the bay doors, which can support a two and a half inch SSD. And with the bay door open, you can slide in a three and a half inch drive. At the bottom of the bay, you see the SATA data and power interfaces. That's one nice thing about these kinds of docks. All you have to do is slide it in nice and smooth. You don't have to deal with any cables. Overall, I like the fit and finish. Uh, they advertise their use of ABS plastic because it has excellent heating and cooling resistance. Which I suppose is a good thing since some hard drives and SSDs can get pretty toasty under normal use. I also like the simple design. It should look great on my desk next to my other hardware. One thing I noticed when installing the 3.5 inch uh, SATA slim hard drive was the extra room in the bay that the drive had to move around uh, thanks to its thinner design. I would be worried for the connectors if the drive itself were to be pushed forward while docked. I would feel more comfortable if the drive stayed in place so I wedged in a folded piece of cardboard into the slot. Not pretty, but it works. Moving on from my hand modeling, let's see how well this $22 dock actually does. As far as real world transfer speeds, while copying 600 megabytes of videos to the 500 gig Hitachi from my primary SSD, I got speeds around 90 megabytes per second. While not as high as you may expect, it is still quite reasonable since we are going through a SATA to USB interface with a good bit of software overhead. It still only took a few seconds to copy those files. Read more about why theoretical speed limits rarely are real for storage devices at the link below. At the same time though, transferring one large video file to the Seagate drive while successful gave me an error message mid-transfer and Windows all out disconnected the Wavelink. When I rebooted the device, the file I was transferring was at its destination and intact. Not sure if this was an anomaly of the drive or the dock as I got the same error trying to transfer multiple times. 
but I never had this problem when the drive was installed in the computer itself and I didn't have the problem doing the same transfer with the Hitachi hard drive. I also didn't experience this issue when transferring multiple files that equaled the same size. I might have to crack this one down to compatibility issues between Seagate and the onboard Wavelink technology. I would expect faster speeds on the SSD especially transferring from one to the other. But since I'm broke, I don't have a spare SSD to test this with. Maybe in the future. The online cloning and backup feature worked as expected and was really simple to set up with the utility provided. Just plug in the source drive, i.e. the drive you want to clone, and the target drive, i.e. the drive you want to copy everything to, and BAM! The time it takes, of course, will vary with the amount of data. The cloning feature will be especially helpful when you want to install a new storage device without interrupting your workflow. I'm sure I will eventually want to upgrade my SSD. When the time comes, I will just clone it, pop in the new SSD, and continue right where I left off. A final note about the physical device. If you're planning on docking hard drives, you will probably want to put some kind of vibration absorption underneath the Wavelink itself. Because with two hard drives I had docked, I could feel the vibration through my keyboard. This was definitely an oversight in the design. To fix the problem, I put a folded piece of napkin underneath it, which worked for me, but of course some rubber tabs will probably work better. After two weeks of using the Wavelink as a typical storage device, copying files back and forth and backing up my project folder, I was very satisfied with its performance. You have to remember this is not a replacement for a NAS, where you can expect faster transfer speeds and higher capacity, but for much more money. I think this is a great solution for a casual user to transfer files around and create backups, and even professionals who need to repair or clone drives quickly. If there's nothing else you take away from this video, please let it be this. Make backups of your data. Please. It's only more important now than ever to protect all of our digital media. And the Wavelink is a good and simple start for that. This has been Patrick CK. Hope to see you in my next video. Thanks everyone.